leading into 2004, of course, I knew who my wife was. Um, she was a very successful shooter, and you know, I would watch her at competitions, and I always admired the way that she competed and the way just she, she carried herself. She looked very calm and uh, just very composed all the time, and I just always admired that, especially when she competed. I said, I wish I could you know, bring a little bit of that in, more into my game. In 2004, um, after the last event, which was men's three position, I had a mistake there, missed out on a gold medal, and uh, since that was the last event of the shooting competitions, period, shotgun, rifle, or pistol, a lot of the athletes were sitting at this beer garden in between the rifle and pistol ranges and the shotgun ranges. So we were just sitting there having a good time, having a couple beers, just relaxing, and uh, Katie and her dad, Peter, were there, and I was talking to some of my Australian friends, and uh, they came up, and Katie tapped me on the shoulder, and I looked up, whoa, there she is. <laughs> And um, her and her dad said how sorry they were that I missed out on the medal and that they really admired how I handled the situation. They really felt that I was the you know, true champion that day. And I said, that's really nice. And uh, they gave me a four-leaf clover keychain that they carried with them for good luck. And I thought that was really nice. So I saw Katie later that day and just you know, said hi and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it was just cool. And then later that year, uh, about two months after, we had the World Cup Final, which is our end of the year champions competition. And it's a much smaller competition. And of course, Katie was there, and so um, she was sitting outside one day doing homework because she was in school. And I just went over and just started chatting with her, and just you know, we just started chatting more and more and more, and we just hit it off really well. And uh, we could tell that there was something between us, but we were both in relationships at the time, so we just you know said, okay, that's not the smartest thing because we're both very loyal people. And it turns out that over the next year, things changed. Um, I actually only heard from Katie maybe once or twice over that next year. And uh, my coach decided to have a training camp in Colorado in August of 2005 for specifically for our women. And he wanted to bring in some of the best women rifle shooters in the world to Colorado and have a training camp to try to boost up our women's program. And it was a really good idea and it was an awesome training camp. And so, of course, Katie was one of them. Well, when my coach Dave called up Peter, which was my wife's father and her coach, said, hey, I want to bring Katie over to this training camp. Um, you know, would you like to send her? And he said, well, she actually kind of retired from shooting. She hasn't shot in a few months, at least. Well, if she wants to come, she's still welcome. You know, she's a great champion, and I think she would do well. Well, Katie decided to come over anyway. And uh, when we saw each other, the same feelings were there. They hadn't gone anywhere. And um, we talked a lot there, and we decided, you know, it's going to be, be a challenge. It's a long-distance thing, but uh, my relationship before that was also long-distance, so I kind of had a little bit of experience with it. And... Um, yeah, here we are. <laughs>